Everybody, what's going on? Happy Friday. Yes, made it another freaking week. All right, today we're going to talk about Record Store Day oh, and new arrivals. All right, a lot to talk about, a lot of stuff kind of went on. Um, again, I don't want to make this a two hour video, so I just want to kind of jump into this. All right, so right off the bat, um, I'm going to have a couple shout outs during this video. Um, this is the first one. I was scrolled through my phone and I forgot what I was looking for. But you guys know what slip mats are, right? The little things that sit on your uh, turntables, right? So for some reason, whatever it was I was looking for, this came up in my feed. And I saw one and it had a picture of Peter Chris's solo album. You know, the Kiss one, the makeup and stuff. I was like, oh, that's kind of badass, you know? So I hit the little heart. I was like, yeah, I'll save that, push it to the side, and I'll get back to whoever's selling this later. So I get back to him later, and I go on to, you know, you hit other sellers' stuff, and he had a whole bunch, a whole bunch of not just Kiss stuff, thank God, because I'm getting a little sick of them, but a whole bunch of other bands in a lot of different genres. And I think he also does custom work as well. I mean, if you ask him, hey, man, can you give me Deep Purple in rock? Maybe he could do it, all right? Um, so his eBay name is Slip Matt, M-A-T, King. Slip Matt King on eBay. And he's got a whole bunch. Um, he's also on Instagram. Um, his name is Iron Vinyl. Instead of Iron Maiden, Iron Vinyl, like the record, all right? Go check him out. Maybe you can message him. Um, either on eBay or on Instagram and just like, hey man, what's up? You know, I was watching this knucklehead Augie over here and he told me about your slip mats and stuff like that. So anyway, I saw what he had and I was like, oh, he's got some cool stuff, man. So I put the Peter Chris aside. Sorry, Pete. And I ordered a couple. So I'm going to show you what I got right off the bat. So I ordered the Black Sabbath's first album, right? Classic album, really cool stuff. He has other Sabbath stuff as well. But for some reason, this was the one that came up. I was like, yeah, you know, I love this album cover. It's kind of cool. It's typical slip mat, right? <laughs> yeah, there's nothing on the other side. Look, I'm getting my fingers on it. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's, it's cool. It's lightweight. All right. Now, one thing about slip mats, not this in particular, all slip mats. With the new 80 gram vinyls now, a lot of these, because the vinyl is heavy, plus this little couple ounces of the mat, <clears throat> it may slow your, your turntable down if it's not an up-to-date one, whatever. But if you got to take it off to play your vinyl, you know, whatever. But they're cool to have on there if your, you know, your turntable has, you know, the plastic cover that closes and you can see through it. I mean, why not? Pretty cool, right? Change them up. So anyway, so I ordered this one, Sabbath. The next one I got was Iron Maiden's first album cover, right? That's pretty badass, right? Kind of cool. Again, they're nice and thin. You know, nice and flimsy. You can wash them and whatnot. You know, you get tired of looking at Sabbath. He changes the mate. <laughs> Next one I got up was uh, Motorhead's Overkill. Great album cover. Cool stuff. He had the other ones as well. You know, go check them out. Right? Now, these were the first two that I put in my little cart. <laughs> as soon as I saw this first one, I was like, oh, I wonder if he's got the other one. And he did. And that's Merciful Fates Melissa. <laughs> I love the album cover. I love the freaking album. It's, you know, in my top 10 all-time favorite metal albums. Right? So that was the first one. And then, of course, the one that follows, The Oath. Right? The other great one. So that's really cool stuff, man. So, yeah, go check him out. You know, see what he's got. Order some stuff from him. Um, he combines shipping, which is great. So go check it out. Now, no, I'm not getting paid to endorse anything. The guy didn't ask me to do this. I just did it out of kindness of my heart here. A nice guy, whatever. Like I said, I got two more shouts out as we start to move on. When I get into record store day, I was going to do that first. But there's one album that I need to complain about. So I'm saving that for last. The whole, whole yeah. But, so let's do the new arrivals first. Shall we? Surely. All right. Right up. ACDC's 50th anniversary, the first album. When ACDC started putting out all the remastered stuff, for some reason, I did not get the 180 gram of this. And every time I saw it in the record stores, I'm like, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. You know, I love the album, don't get me wrong. You know, I got multiple copies of it. I just never got 
the remastered on vinyl. I have the remastered on CDs, as you guys know, but I never picked it up. So now that they came out with the gold editions, I was like, oh, that's kind of cool. Now, they also have the Highway to Hell, which is like the, the flame look of one, and they have Back in Black, which is black with like some white stuff going through it. Those are the only two that are not like gold. You know, all the other albums are just gold covered. So I was like, all right, I'm going to bite the bullet now. It's 50th anniversary, and, and I'll get a gold version of this. And I don't know about the Highway to Hell and the Back in Black. I, I'm probably not going to get it. I might. I don't know. I have multiple copies of this stuff already, you know. Um, if I do bite the bullet and get two more gold versions, it'll probably be Powerage and, and Let That Be Rock, you know, right off the bat. But I have the 180 grams already. I don't know, man. Whatever. Well, let me show you this real quick. All right? I mean, the back cover, there's, there's no extra songs or nothing else going on. It's just an anniversary. It's in gold vinyl. That's all. Um, they give you this cool kind of insert, which is kind of like the new ACDC thing now. All right? If you go on ACDC's official band website you can get all this stuff right it's not a secret very cool the inner sleeve all right looks like that now i don't know if the other 180 gram remastered sleeve is the same exact thing as this i mean it kind of looks like it is i don't think this is any different all right and then the vinyl itself looks like this this is one side and it's cool it's kind of like you guys really can't eh, you might you know it's kind of like a swirly kind of gold going on there and then the other side's got the 50th anniversary label. All right. Cool stuff. So that's that. Right off the bat. All right. Now, let me just put this away. Put that over there. Now, that's that. Now this. Oof. Merciful Fate bootleg. It's the Melissa tour, but it's got some um, Don't Break the Old songs on here. This is 1984 recorded in Belgium. Ooh, real cool bootleg, man. I saw this. I was like, oh, yeah. Now, I haven't listened to it yet. I, none of the stuff that I'm going to show you, I haven't listened to yet, all right? It's just stuff that came in, and, you know, I need time to listen. But that's the back. I know it's hard to see. Yeah, there you go. But it's got some cool stuff on it, man. It's got, um, it's recorded in 1984 in Belgium. It's got The Oath. It's got Evil. Um, Curse of the Pharaohs. Doomed by the Living Death. Uh, Into the Coven. Uh, Black Masses, Gypsy, and A Corpse Without a Soul. Cool. All right, it's on um, Heavy Metal Records. All right, check it out. Let me bust this out real quick, show you this. Oh, comes with this cool poster, which is basically the uh, album cover. All right. Pretty badass, if I do say so myself. Nothing fancy there. It's on. What's going on here? piece of dust or something <laughs> that's side a and that's the side of b all right nice cool red vinyl i'm digging it yeah so out of this whole pile i'm going to show you this is probably the first thing i'm going to listen to probably over the weekend all right takes care of some merciful fate really cool stuff 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 all right let me put him to the side and i'll put all this stuff away later all right got a little iron maiden coming at you this is um run before the killers go free Iron Maiden. Another cool bootleg. All right. This was uh, recorded in uh, Stockholm, Sweden, September 8th, 1981. This is the back. The songs on here. Uh, the Eyes of March, Sanctuary, Purgatory, Rothschild, Twilight Zone, Remember Tomorrow, Genghis Khan, Killers, Another Life, Ooh. Innocent Exile, Running Free, Murders in the Rue Morgue, Phantom of the Opera, Iron Maiden. Transylvania, Drifter, excuse me, and Prowler. This is with uh, Deano. This is Gatefold. Looks like that. You guys, get all that. Love Maiden back in the day, man. This, it's a double album. 180 gram, nothing fancy with the sleeve. You got one side, it's kind of like on this, um, I don't know, kind of brown. Looks like it's got a little bit of burgundy in it. Vinyl. And that's the other side. All right. Check it out. That's one. Bust out the other one. It's pretty much the same thing. Nothing fancy going on there. All right. It's the other label. And pretty much the same thing. All right. Can you dig it? I knew that you could. All right. 
Now, again, I haven't listened to this either. I don't know if this is on. Let's see what label this is on, shall we? I don't know if this is the Evil Dead or, um, well, this is 287. But it doesn't tell me out of how many press, oh, how many presses. Oh, so there's multiples. It comes in red vinyl, white vinyl, brown vinyl. So this is number 282, I guess on the brown vinyl. And I guess they, I don't know, it's kind of hard to make this out. Oh, what, what record label is this? I thought it was Evil Dead. You know, the one I've showed you a hundred times already. But yeah, I don't know. When I figure it out, I'll let you know right now. Clueless, but it looks like, you know, the Evil Dead, um, the artwork and stuff. I don't know. I'll figure it out. All right. Speaking of Iron Maiden, this came up out of nowhere. I had no idea this was even coming out. No idea. But I actually found this at Walmart. All right. <laughs> Somewhere back in time. It's yellow vinyl. And I was in there going to get some cat stuff. And every time I go in there, I go into the vinyl section. And I'm like, what is this? So, snag, right? No questions asked. It's made in snagging it, right? So, the inner sleeve is the same. Nothing new there, all right? It's on this cool yellow vinyl. Now, if you guys saw my Instagram, I, I posted this a while ago. Cool yellow vinyl, 180 gram, you know, the remastered copy. You know, I actually put this on when I was doing something else. And it, you know, sounds fine, all right? Put this back in there. And the only extra thing that it comes with is this uh, lithograph kind of thing. And I don't know. It's it's kind of 3D. I don't know if you're going to see it really well here. But, you know, it's one of those things you look at. It's kind of popping out at you. So that that's kind of cool. Now, I don't know if they're going to do anything else. I don't know if they're doing Power Slave or anything else. But I just saw this. I was like, holy cow. I had no idea this was even available. And there it was. I was like, all right, that's kind of cool. So somewhere in time, Walmart. If I didn't have to go get kitty litter, I would have never seen it. <laughs> all right, enough of that. Speaking of Walmart, this just arrived today. I actually ordered this online. I went to walmarts.com thing. I was like, you know, what other Iron Maiden stuff do they have? And that was the only one as far as that yellow vinyl thing goes. So then I came across Pyromania, all right? Now, you guys know that there's a box set coming out with this, and there's uh, double vinyl. I think one is blue and one is yellow, and the whole CD stuff that you... I think it's released today or it's coming out tomorrow, but it's, it's out, all right? The anniversary of this. Now, this is kind of cool. Now, there's no extra songs. The artwork is all the same. No extras on the inside, none of that. It's just... That, all right? Just that the vinyl is cool looking. It's on this like uh, yellow orange kind of splatter, all right? And it's got like the um, the British label going on there. English label, whatever you guys want to call it. The mushroom, the flying mushroom. <laughs> all right, so that that's kind of cool. And it was, wasn't was expensive at all, all right? So that's, that's kind of cool. I was like, yeah, why not, man? Another version of Pyromania. And my box set should be coming any day now. So that'll be another new arrival. All right. So cool pyromania. Nothing else going on with that. All right. Another new arrival that came in a while ago. The uh, Life is Killing Me. Typo Negative. Three albums. It's triple gatefold. Rah, opens like that. Now, the third album on here, it's all it's a, a whole bunch of bonus stuff on here, which is kind of cool. But um, I'm going to show you one of the vinyls. Uh, it comes with some inserts here. It's got, you know, little stuff going on there. It's got some words. All right. Some more words. So that's kind of cool. I'll show you one of the vinyls. It's on this uh, green stuff. Arr, nothing fancy there. Sign like this green marble, which of course, you know, typo neg negative in their green. I'm the green man. All right. Three vinyls. 
One. Two. All right. Two. I got one more. Oh, dos. Where's the third one? Is in the middle. Pull that out. Same thing. White sleeve. Green vinyl. Green label. Cool. All right. So, yeah. I haven't listened to this yet. You know, I just... I'll probably listen to the bonus stuff first because I already have the CD. But, uh, yeah, man. Pretty cool. All right. Maybe if I get a little closer, maybe you guys can see the bonus stuff. All right. Typo fans. Let's check all that out. All right. So, that's cool. Now, I got a cool, quick story about Pete. I don't know if I said this on one of my other videos or not. But when Lemoore's in Brooklyn was still open... Um, I banished to play there all the time, and I didn't realize till later on that one of the bouncers there actually worked with me. You know, I saw this guy every day, did not know that he was a bouncer at Lemoore's, because when you're in a band and you're loading in, you're loading in early. By the time the place opens and the employees show up, you're not really paying attention to what's going on in the front door. You load in, you set your stuff up. You play whatever, one, two, three, four in the morning over here on the East Coast. You pack your stuff up, and you're out the door. Maybe you'll go to the bar and grab a beer or two, and then, you know, you're out. So I don't know who's bouncing at the door. So him and I were talking one day. He goes, yeah, yeah, I bounce at Lemoore's. I was like, what? I play there all the time. Long story short, he goes, anytime you want to come in, let me know. He goes, and I'll get you in, which was great. <laughs> so I went to go see. It was Lacuna Coil and Moonspell. And they, they were playing, man. So I go to Lemoore's, grab my band buddies. We go down, cut the line, get the free wristbands, in. So as the night's going on, uh, neither band was, was on yet. Now, Lemoore's was split in two. There was a, a big stage on the back end of the club, and then it was um, a decent-sized stage on the front end of the club. But the back <laughs> stage had... An actual behind the stage, kind of like a dressing room area. The front stage area kind of really didn't. But there was a closed off bar to the left of the stage. And that's what they made kind of like the dressing room area and like the holding pen for the other bands. So me being me, hey man, I'm going in. There was, was before, you know, there was no security or anything crazy like that. It was just a club. So I go in and I just walked in the door. No one stopped me. Nobody asked me anything. And there's Lacuna Coil hanging out with Moonspell, and they're getting ready to go on. So I think Lacuna Coil went on first. Yeah, Lacuna Coil was opening. So they went on first, and I'm hanging out with the Moonspell guys. And I brought um, CD covers, and I had them sign everything. I should have pulled them out, but they're still in boxes. And, you know, watch Lacuna Coil show. They come off stage. They're doing a thing. Moonspell goes up. I go hang out, watch Moonspell. They come off. Now I'm hanging out with both acts, just chilling. Um, the Lacuna Coil uh, girl, she was being interviewed by like some kind of rock magazine. So she was just like hanging out. And I'm just sitting there at the bar there that they had. And I'm just hanging out with like the Moonspell guys and uh, the Lacuna Coil guys, the, the singer and the guitar player. And we're just hanging out, just talking. And all of a sudden through the back door, here comes this six foot dude Green satin jacket with like this hat that, you know, Pete always wears. And he comes walking in. He's got like a Burger King or a McDonald's bag in his hand. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> it's Pete Steele. He's like, hey guys, how you doing? You know, it's like, holy shit, you know. So he comes in. He just hangs out at the bar. He says hello to everybody. I'm like, oh my God. Now, my other two knucklehead bandmates never came in to hang out. They just, I don't want I'm scared. Ugh. So they just hung out on the floor. And I'm back there hanging out with everybody else. So Pete comes in, he sits standing next to me over there, and we're all talking. And I'm like, oh my God, I got Pete Steele over here. I got the Lacuna guys over here. I got the Moonspell guys who just came in, and now they're hanging out, talking. And Pete's eating his hamburger and drinking his shake, eating French fries, and we're all just bullshitting, you know. And I'm, me being me, I'm breaking Pete's balls because he's so damn tall, and I'm like, you know, five foot nothing. <laughs> so he finishes eating, and I don't know how this started. But he grabs his McDonald's Burger King bag and, he, bag and he goes like this. He crumples it up. 
He's like, hey, Augie, go long, right? Now, for those of you, I'm talking football. And go long means he's the quarterback and he wants me to go long because he's going to throw the bag like a football to me. So I'm like, all right, cool. So I start going long. And here comes the lacuna and some of the Moonspell guys. Now, next thing I know, we're like playing touch football in the dressing room over here. And Pete steals the quarterback. So I go long. The singer <laughs> from uh, Lacuna Coil is, you know, following me out there. You know, he's trying to intercept it. Pete throws the bag and it's intercepted. The guy grabs the bag. He runs to the other end of the bar. It's a touchdown. And it was that quick of a thing. Oh, Augie, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry. Oh, Pete, you suck. You know, and we're all joking around laughing. It was just a less than a two-minute thing. But it's it, still there, you know, in, in my brain. I was like, holy cow, I can't believe this just happened, you know. So the rest of the night goes on, whatever. So the night is is ending and everybody's leaving. The band's going home. I'm like, yo, Pete, I, you know, I got Lacuna's autographs. I got Moonspell's autographs. So I'm like, Pete, before you split, I need your autograph, dude. Now, I wish this was before iPhones. I think the flip phones were still out and... I don't know. I didn't take a picture like an idiot, but I still have his autograph. And he wrote, he was like, Augie. And he just wrote, I'm sorry, Pete Steele. And the reason why he wrote, I'm sorry, is because he threw the damn interception and he made us lose the game. True story. <laughs> All right, enough of that. Really cool dude, man. You know, I really wish he was still around. Down to earth guy. Really cool. Really nice, friendly. That was a great loss, man. Pete, ah, killing me. All right. So, along the lines of typo negative, um, I actually picked up him. Um, this is the uh, Tears on Tears on Tape. And I didn't even have this on CD, so I saw this in vinyl. I was like, oh, snap. So, I picked this up. I like him. Cool band. All right, the inner sleeve. Show you the vinyl. It's kind of like this mint green kind of marble going on. Now, I don't know if it's still true or not, but it, the guitar player and him, I don't know if he still is, but he was married to Tony Iommi's daughter. All right? <laughs> Which makes sense, because if you guys remember, um, when Tony and Ian Gillen did uh, that little EP with uh, Nico McBrain and um, Jason Newstead called Who Cares? And that guitar player from him actually played on that EP. Probably because he was married to Iommi's daughter. <laughs> I don't know if he still is or not. I don't know. All right. Last thing of new arrivals. Um, I picked up the Electric Light Orchestra. Yeah, I like my classic rock. Um, cool album, man. Um, Secret Messages. I think this was the first time it was released. Um, on on Or the full thing was released on vinyl because this is a double album. Uh, released in 1983, and it's got Rock and Roll is King on it, but uh, this is pretty cool. You know, I, I dig ELO. I always liked them from the 70s. You know, Jeff Lim, Lim, Lynn carried on. This is Gayfold. You know, the, the cool, uh, two cool songs on here are Stranger, um, Rock and Roll is King, and then the other one um, uh, I dig on here. Oh, Secret Messages. That's a cool song. All right, nothing fancy there. Just on an epic... Label, just black label, nothing fancy. And the other album is the same thing. So I was like, oh man, they finally released this double album full, you know, no edits, no cutouts, nothing like that. So I was like, yeah, that's pretty cool. I'll check this out. If I can get this back in there, all right, get it there later. Yeah, I don't think there's any, uh, yeah, there's no books or anything like that. Nothing extra. So yeah, ELO. All right, so that takes care of. The new arrivals. Now we're gonna get into this record store day crap stuff. <laughs> I don't have much. Now, first right off the bat, I had gone to two record stores. And the first one I went to had one, two, three things I wanted, and then I had to go back to another record store the second day to get the other thing that I wanted. Now, quick, I had a work record store day, so I'm not online at four in the morning waiting to go inside to buy a record. No, that's not my style. I'm not doing it. You guys do it. That's great. Not me. I had to go to work in the morning. I came home. It's 10 o'clock in the morning. I'm still home. 10 o'clock. I'm still home. Everybody's been out clearing out the record stores. I'm like, yeah, I'm in no rush. When I get there, I get there. So I'm sitting at the table and I'm eating some pancakes and drinking my coffee and 
My phone is starting to text. And it's, you know, a couple of my friends. Yo, dude, where are you? What's going on? Did you leave your house yet? I'm like, no, I still have one eye open. I'm like, uh, I'm eating pancakes, drinking coffee, dude. Oh, my God, I can't believe you're not out of the house yet. I'm like, relax. Nothing's going anywhere. Calm down. If I don't find what I'm looking for, I don't care. I'm not going to lose sleep over it. I'll get it somewhere. Like, calm down. It's not a matter of life and death, man. So anyway, so that was a couple of my friends. Then another buddy of mine, I go on Instagram and he's texting me on there. He's like, hey, Augie, man, what's going on, dude? I'm over at, over here at this record store. Are you coming out or what? I go, yeah, man. I says, I'm still home. By the time I get there, it's going to be about 11 o'clock. You know, I'm probably going to miss you. Now, the guy I'm talking about is my boy, Anthony. Anthony! Now, Anthony, really cool dude. He has a YouTube channel as well. You should go check him out if you don't already. His name is Ant, A-N-T, on Music 13. Ant on Music 13. Cool cat, very knowledgeable, like me. <laughs> Same kind of personality, just not as loud and maybe as obnoxious as I, I don't know, whatever. He's not this. He's, yeah, so this is Ant. You know, I'm going to show you some vinyl. Very cool dude, all right? <laughs> Does He's not all like this with the hands, all right? Um, cool guy, man. I, I've known this guy for years. Um, he used to uh, DJ at a local rock club called Streets in Rochelle back in the day. And then he also did... Um, like this, this metal show at the local uh, radio station back in the day as well. So he used to interview a bunch of rock stars and stuff. So if you go to his um, YouTube channel, ask him to tell you the story about Trickster and ask him to tell you the story about Overkill. Now, I think on one of his last videos, he talked about his Ace Freely interview and how well that went. <laughs> yeah, ask him about Trickster. Now, speaking of Trickster and Ace Freely, don't ask me why I just did that. <laughs> but I've record store day that weekend. I had the Ace Freely, the new Ace Freely in my hand about four or five times. And I can't get myself to buy it again. I, I'm talking about this again. I don't know if it's the trickster connection. I don't know what it is, but I can't, I, I can't do it. You know, Ace just need from all the rumors that I'm hearing. Ace didn't play on half the album. You know, the trickster guy did. Listen, man, you know, two words. Ace, go get Eddie Kramer, go get Anton Fig, play all the guitars, play the bass. Come on, dude. You know, I don't know. Again, I've listened to the stuff on Ace's new album, and it's got a couple of hit or misses, you know, like 10,000 Volts is cool, and Fight for Your Life, from what I heard, is cool. And, you know, actually, Ace's song, Back in Your Arms, or Back in My Arms, the rest of it, it's too trickster for me. And I don't know about guys that are like my age, but towards the end of that hair metal thing that was kind of fizzing out with, you know, trickster and firehouse, no offense to firehouse. I know the singer just passed away, but the last hurrah of that, those bands, I didn't get into any of them. No part of it, you know, it was kind of like, eh, you know, sorry, but no, you know, and I just, the Ace just sounds too much like a trickster. I, I just can't do it. So anyway, but yeah, ask Anthony about the trickster story. It's it's actually pretty fun. Um, so yeah, go check out my boy Anthony. So I went to my second music store to find the Eric Carr box set that I'm going to talk about. And the guy behind the counter is another good friend of mine, this guy, Jamie. Really cool cat. And actually... This store that I'm talking about called Bisque and Dat up here in uh, Connecticut is where me and Anthony reconnected. Uh, it was funny because I haven't seen the guy in years, whatever. But anyway, my boy Jamie, he's in a thrash band. And he gave me this CD a while ago and I packed it up when I moved. And it's his band called Reaper. Now, this is just obviously a copy. Um, his band is called Reaper. Cool thrash band, man. This is called Anthems of the Curse. Um, I... They play up here in like the north kind of east coast, New York, New Jersey, kind of Connecticut area. Um, definitely worth checking out, man. I've seen them. They're freaking great. Um, they got songs in called Transylvania Quest, It's Alive, um, Buried in the Sand. And I can't pronounce the last one. Uh, Lysian Sins. You got Tony, Tommy on vocals, Mario on lead guitar, my boy Jamie on bass. And a drummer's name is Tear, like <laughs> the Black Sabbath album. But yeah. Cool stuff, man. They're called Reaper. 
If you're in the East Coast area, man, go check them out. They play everywhere. Cool stuff. Great guy, man. Blaze player, Aunt James. Love the guy, man. Cool dude. So, yeah. So, between Jamie and my boy, Anthony, great guys. Now, record store day. One of the things I was looking for, like a lot of you guys found, was the Thin Lizzy um, live. Uh, this was uh, Hammersmith, November 16th, 1976. Now, basically, all this is, I'm sure a lot of you guys know, is just... Please hold. Ugh. It's one of the CDs on here, the Live and Dangerous. Um, actually, I think it's CD4 that this is the album of the CD. But yeah, man, Live and Dangerous Tour 76, Lizzie was on fire, man. So this was worth picking up. All right, if you guys haven't seen this, some people have posted this on Instagram, I'm sure. It's on YouTube. I haven't been coasting around lately. It's Gatefold. It's a double album. Bust this out. All right, it's one of the inner sleeves, Mr. Brian Downey, great underrated drummer. All right, it's on black vinyl. All right, nothing fancy there. You know, it's got killer set list too, man. This is the other one. You got Phil, Brian. I mean, pff, Brian, Jesus Christ, Scott. <laughs> Brian's on the other one. You know, Brian, the other Scott. Same thing, black vinyl. I haven't listened to it yet, but I have listened to the CD. So it starts off with Jailbreak, Massacre, Emerald, Johnny, It's Only Money, Still In Love With You. What a great song, man. Johnny the Fox, Jimmy the Weed. The boys are back in town, of course. Rosalie, great Bob Seger cover song. Suicide Warriors, Sha La La. Baby Drives Me Crazy. Me and the boys, wondering how you and the girls are getting home tonight. What's cool, you know, Huey Lewis, Monica, not on this, but, you know, Huey Lewis back in the 80s, you know. Played harmonica on the um, the other version. The Huey Lewis. So, yeah. Thin Lizzy, that was the first one. Picked it up, found it, was Happy Camper. Now, the next one, I was kind of like, eh, I have the CD of it. But um, it might be kind of hard to find later or someone's going to want a ridiculous amount of money for it. Why, well, I don't know. But that's the Motley Crew. All right. The Supersonic and the Demos. Now, there's some cool songs on here that I, I dug. That's pretty much why I picked it up. Um, Teaser's a cool song. Primal Scream. Um, what was the other one on here? That's cool. Their version of Anar uh, Anarchy in, in the UK. Rock and Roll Junkies, a cool song. Angela, that was a great song on here. You know, Teaser's is the um, the guitar player from Purple. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name. Tommy Bolin. That's his song. Double Vinyl. All right, get some liner notes and stuff in there. Now, the vinyl is cool. Picture disc. It's basically just the, uh, kind of like the cabinet speakers. All right, that looks like fried eggs. I don't know what's going on here. Maybe a side order of home uh, home fries would be good. <laughs> See, that's the first one. 180 gram. Again, I haven't listened to this stuff yet. Nothing going on here with the inner sleeve. Again, it's just a speaker cone. The Motley. Cool stuff, all right? So that was not a must for me. Unlike the Lizzie, but when I saw it, I was like, yeah, all right, man. I'm, it's record store day. I'm going to splurge a little bit. All right. The other thing that I'm sure you've guys seen was the Eric Carr. Now, I, when I knew that this was coming out, I wasn't sure if this was the same as the other two that came out, the last two record store days, and, and it's not. All right. Now, this is supposed to put your finger between there and the eyes light up, you know, they glow, but I didn't charge it. I'm sure if you want to go, you can watch, you know what? Go to my boy Anthony's channel and he presses between here and the eyes go, whoosh, they light up. It's actually pretty cool. All right. But um, this is the back of it. Freaking Eric, man. Pff, another underrated drummer. But there's some cool stuff on here. I kind of went through a little bit. Um, Eric speaks to the fans. Just can't wait. Trouble inside you. Eric talks about his music. Interesting stuff. It's really cool to pick up if you're a Kiss fan. Um, this opens up. Right, that's the record. Now, the only thing, you know, they put the money in to do the, the eyes and stuff. You know, you, you put in the little uh, USB port here, you plug it in, you gotta wait like 20 minutes for this thing to turn on. I didn't do that. Um, the only thing that's kind of missing here, which was kind of a bummer, is kind of like a book. They should have had some kind of book in here, maybe save their money on the eyes lighting up, which is cool, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, a nice cool book with Eric's history you know, from when he played in the club days and, you know, if Gene and Paul allowed, you know, some Kiss stuff and stories in there, you know. But this is cool, man. I met Eric's sister, Loretta, 
way back um, after Eric had passed, probably in the beginning, like the first year. And um, I met her at a KISS convention. Really sweetheart, you know. And um, so everything she's doing to carry on Eric's name is is great. You know, don't get me wrong. It's great stuff, man. Good job, Loretta. So it's a double album. Again, it shows everything on the back. Um, it's not gatefold. But the albums do have, you know, a couple cool pictures. Great shot of Eric on the Animal Eyes tour. Right? Got some words and some stuff going on there. This is uh, yellow vinyl. Ugh. Don't want to rip it. Come on, man. Static electricity, dude. That's the worst. Ah, man. Easy does it. Don't want to rip anything. All right, there you go. So this is the yellow vinyl one. And I, so that goes there. That's pretty cool. All right. Put that there. And here's the other one. You know, in the makeup, that looks like the uh, Creatures of the Night Tour. I can tell by the drum set. Got some liner notes there. This is on blue vinyl. All right. Pretty cool. I don't need to pull it all out because it's giving me a hard time right now. And I'm not even going to try to push it in because it's kind of stuck. Leave well enough alone. Um, it does come with this cool poster. Kind of like, you know, the other Kiss solo albums. All right. So that's pretty cool, man. Got nothing on the back. So all in all, cool packaging. It's awesome. All right. So that was, this was the real main thing I was looking for. And I had to go get it the second day because the first day, the first store was sold out. So I go, oh my God. But then my boy Anthony was telling me, he goes, yeah, no, the other store, they got like, they had like five or six copies of it. So I went there and they had it. Now, the last album I want to talk about, I was, this was the other one that I really, really wanted. And I saw it on Instagram before, like, a couple weeks before Record Store Day. And I was like, holy cow, that's cool. And, yeah, let, let's just get into this, shall we? This is Dio's. All right? Last in line. All right? This picture disc thingy. Now, <laughs> 40th anniversary. Um, it's remastered. And it's supposed to be one of those albums, all right? Plastic Sleeve. It's the whole album, double side, that when you put it on and it spins, this stuff's supposed to move, all right? It's supposed to look all cool. If you go on Instagram, you know, I think uh, the Ronnie James site, whatever, actually shows this. And you're like, oh, that's badass. When you take it home and you put it on your record player, your turntable, and this thing starts spinning at normal speed, all of this looks like is just a brown and orange Blur. You can't see anything moving. Nothing. I had this on a turntable. I put my finger down to try to slow it down to see if any of these things were moving. Got nothing. You know, I was pissed. And I'm like, you got to be kidding me. And I've been waiting for weeks for this, and this is not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And maybe if you got some kind of pitch shifter on your stereo or whatever it is, but. This was like my biggest disappointment. You know, nothing against Ronnie or his wife or anything like that. But this did not work. And I'm not the only one who's saying this. There's other guys are saying the same thing, you know. And when I bought this at the record store, the guy goes to me. He goes, have you seen it yet? You know, I, did you get the D? I said, no. He goes, I'm telling you right now. He goes, well, you're going to see a brown and orange blur. I was like, all right, well, I'll take it home. I'll see what happens. I put it on. This is the first thing I put on. Brown and orange blur, man. It's like, you got to be kidding me. So I was a little disappointed with this. Does it sound good? Yeah, it sounds good. You know, it's the whole album. It sounds great, man. You know, last in line, great album. Just does not do what it's supposed to do. So that was the big disappointment for me. Now, hopefully, I've said this a hundred million times. This needs to be a box set. Last in line needs to be a box set. All right. Or some kind of special edition like they did with... Uh, Holy Diver, you know, get the guy Joe there again to remix one version, remaster the other. Uh, you know, the problem is now there's so much after Ronnie passed, they just started pushing out all this live stuff. I don't even know. I mean, hopefully they have some other recorded concerts um, of this tour that they can put on, you know, deluxe version um, or a, a DVD. If there's no more songs, another concert, uh, something, you know, but this needs to be the next box set and every time something comes up on instagram you know on the ronnie james deal i always write in the comment no matter what it is 
Last in line box set, last in line box set, last in line box set. You know, please put out a last in line box set. So we'll see what happens. Maybe there's something in the works because this came out. Ah, who knows, man. But uh, all right, so that's enough ranting and raving of record store day and new arrivals. It's Friday. It's early. I'm going to go hit a happy hour. You know what I mean? Oh, five dollar draft, something. <laughs> Even though I got to work tomorrow, but you know, keep it under, you know, a couple beers. I got to get up. But that's it. All right, there, guys. So. Until next time, keep the vinyl spinning, all right? Watch out for one another out there. It's a crazy world, all right? I've been watching the news again. Oh, my God, it's insane. Pfft, depressing. I just want to watch the weather. I don't care about anything else. Just let me know if it's going to be cold or hot, rainy or snowy. That's all I need to know. I don't care about anything else. But that's it, guys. So, hey, yo, have a good weekend. And uh, I'll catch you on the flip side. And um, peace out, buttercup. Oh, go check out my boy Anthony, all right? And check out my other boy, uh, Reaper, James. And definitely go see Slip Matt King. Get some Slip Mats. Cool dude, man. His name is Ray. Go check him out. Tell him Augie sent you. <laughs> Peace out, guys.